Hi, my name is Paulo, and today I'm going to present our work called Local Neighborhood Based Adaptation of Weights in Mood Object Evolutionary Algorithms Based on Decomposition. This work was developed by me, Ivo Meneghini, and Frederico Guimarães. This is a summary of my presentation, and I will start with a brief introduction about the context, and then I will present the algorithm developed in this work, followed by the computational experiments and the results, and finally, some conclusions and the references. The decomposition-based MOAs have become popular in the recent years due to its interesting results, especially for solving many objective problems. The MOAD algorithm is one of the most popular algorithms in the decomposition base, and it uses weight vectors to find a well-distributed set of solutions. Even though the solutions found by the MOAD are well distributed for many regular operator problems, for irregular ones, that may not be the case. Among the many approaches that enhance the composition based algorithms, one is the reallocation of the weight vectors to promised regions. But why to adopt the weight vectors? As initially mentioned, some regions of the initial set of weight vectors may not contain any Pareto solutions. And in the evolution process, the set of solutions may not be well distributed. Some cases may have an accumulation of solutions at the edges of the Pareto front and also a waste of computational resources. In the area of reallocating the weight vectors, many studies have been conducted and some of them change the weights at random, others utilize information from the current or the archive population, and many others mix two or more of these approaches. Some of the that adapt the weight vectors are exemplified in this slide. Our proposal method is called Mood Object Evolutionary Algorithm based on decomposition with local neighborhood based adaptation, or MOAD LNA for short. It is a decomposition based algorithm that uses the framework of the MOAD algorithm with some other improvements and the proposal weight vector adaptation procedure as well. Here is presented the pseudocode and is highlighted some of the improvements that were used with the correspondent references. To summarize, we utilized the risk as energy initialization of weight vectors methods. Also, we utilized the dynamic normalization that helps estimate the ideal and the ID points. Our algorithm makes use of an archive and archive and maintenance methods. And finally, the update of the weight vectors that are triggered by a improvement metric. Next, I'm going to present the update of weight vector procedure of MOIA DLNA, which we believe is the main part of our work. Uh, the update has four steps, and the first one is the calculation of the number of solutions in the archive that are closer to each weight vector and it's going to originate what we call the local neighborhoods. Next, we have the removal of the weight vectors with empty local neighborhoods, followed by the addition of the new weight vectors. And after that, we are going to create the new set of weight vectors that are adopted, and we are going to associate it to the current population. The first step of the adaptation procedure of MOAD LNA consists of calculating the angular distances between all solutions to all weight vectors. After that, solutions will be allocated to the local neighborhoods of the closest weight vector. To explain the MOAD LNA weight vector adaptation process, it is presented a two dimensional problem in different scenarios. In these examples, there are five weight vectors and five solutions from the archive represented as dashed lines and blue dots, respectively as we can see in this first picture. In this first case scenario, solutions S1, S4, and S5 will be allocated to the local neighborhoods of weight vectors W1, W4, and W5, as these are the closest vectors. For solutions S2, the closest vector will be the W3, as the angle between S2 and W3 is smaller than S2 and W2. The W3 weight vector is also the closest vector to the solution S3. Hence, W3 will have two solutions in its local neighborhood, and W2 will have an empty local neighborhood. In MOE DLNA, each local neighborhood will have a limited size that's controlled by the parameter K, which is intended to control the number of solutions into a particular region and help to explore other promised regions. 
So if the closest way to texture to a solution has already reached the maximum capacity of its local neighborhoods, the solution is stored in a temporary set denominated by S. To exemplify, in the second case, solutions S2, S3, and S4 are close to the weight vector W3, although in this example, the maximum capacity is K equals to 2. And as the order of the association is random, one possible scenario is that the local neighborhood of W3 will be composed by solutions S3 and S4. The surplus S2 will be allocated to the temporary set S. In this case, after all local neighborhoods have been processed, it is time to redistribute the surplus solutions stored in S. Thus, solutions in S will be allocated to the other local neighborhoods with the smallest size different than zero. With a certain probability, the solution could be allocated to one local neighborhood from the, from the vector in BI, where WI is the closest vector to the solution. Otherwise, it will be allocated to any other smallest local neighborhood available. Following this example, where the solutions S2 were stored in S, had W3 as the closest vector with delta probability, the W2 solution could be randomly allocated to one weight vector from the neighborhood BI of W3 that satisfies the previous conditions. In this case, only weight vector W5 is available. Otherwise, with one minus delta probability, S2 could be allocated to the other local neighborhoods that also satisfy the condition. In this case, W1 and W5. Let's consider that the solution W2 would be allocated to the local neighborhoods of W1. The second step of the adaptation process is the removal of weight vectors that do not contain any solutions in their local neighborhoods. Considering the past examples, in case one, the W2 weight vector was the only one without any solution in its local neighborhood. In case two, not only weight vector W2, but also W4 had an empty local neighborhood. So in this both case, they were deleted. The remainder of the weight vectors composed the W prime set. And that's the end of the removal part. In the third step, where a DLNA will create weight vectors utilizing the method called cone weight vector generator, or WVG for short. In this method, a cone of weight is generated by a preference direction vector V and a pressure angle T. For all local neighborhoods with size bigger than one, it is generated a cone of weight vectors where the preference direction vector is the correspondent weight vector with an aperture angle given by the fraction of the angle of the hyperdiagonal. The total number of weight vectors generated for each cone will be the same size of the local neighborhood times a constant C. All the newly created weights from the cones are going to compose the set called WG. In case 1, W3 were the only weight vector with local neighborhoods with size bigger than 1. Consequently, only one cone is generated. Let's consider in this example C equals to 3. The total amount of weights generated in that cone will be six. These weight vectors will con consist the newly generated WG set. For case two, the local neighborhoods of W1 and W3 had size bigger than one. Hence, it will be created one cone for each. For this time, let's consider C equals to two. There will be a total of eight weight vectors generated and originated the WG set. Finally, the vectors that maximize the angular distance to all weight vectors in the set W prime is taken from WG and added to it, repeating this process until the size of W prime equals the initial population size. After that, the current population in the evolutionary process is then associated to the newly adopted weight vector set. The current solutions are associated to the closest weight vectors available related to the angular distance. And that is the end of the adaptation process. Next, I'm going to present our computational experience. Where DLNA were compared to other popular decomposition-based algorithms, and we utilized the same initial set of weight vectors that were based on the risk as energy 
to all algorithms. The initial set of test problems were the DTLZ 1 to 7 and the WFG 1 to 9. We tested on a 3, 5, 8, and 10 dimension problems, and we decided to use the size of the population as 120, 160, 210, and 300, as we would like to uh, see how the weight vectors adapt with a low number of population. And we utilize the IDD as a performance metric as it, it is really recommended for high dimension problems. Next, I would like to show some result examples on a three dimensional problem. The first one is the inverted DTLZ1 problem. Here we have two pictures, and the first one is the final set of solutions found by Moya D LNA. We can see it in this picture that the algorithm has found a well distributed set of solutions along the whole thread of sets. On the second picture on the right, we have a comparison between the initial set of weight vectors against the final ones. And we can see as well that the adaptation of weight vectors procedure has approximated the shape of the Pareto front in this case. Next, the same idea, but this time for the DTLZ7 problem. On the left figure, we can see the final distribution of solutions found by Moya D LNA. Here, the algorithm was capable of finding a well-distributed set of solutions in all parts of this disconnected Pareto front. On the right, we can see the final distribution of weight vectors and its comparison with the initial ones. And here as well, we could see a approximation of the shape of the Pareto front in the adaptation of the weight vectors. Next, I would like to show you some examples on the inverted detail Z1 compared to other five algorithms that we run the test against. And we can see that the distribution of Moya DLNA have a well distributed set of solutions, especially if we take a look in the center of the Pareto front. Next, we have the same idea but now comparing the five algorithms against Moya D LNA in the DTLZ7 problem. Here we have a disconnected Pareto front, and we can see here as well that the Moya D LNA have found an interesting number of solutions in each part of the disconnected front. And if compared to the other algorithms, we have a more uniform uh, distribution of solutions especially as well in the center of each part of the, the disconnected front. Next, I would like to show you some examples of the regular operator front DTLZ1 problem. And in our studies, we understand that when algorithm utilize a adaptation of weight vectors procedure, they showed some low performance on regular operator fronts. And here we would like to show you uh, that the MUE DLNA have a really good approximation of the results of the original MUE D with a well distributed set of solutions. Next, I would like to show the table that summarizes the wins, losses, and draws for each algorithm against MUE DLNA using the Wilcoxon rank test. And from this table, we can see that our algorithm won many of the runs. Also, we have 23 best means out of the 72 test in instance among the regular and the regular operator fronts. And finally, our conclusion is that we presented a new version of the decomposition-based evolutionary algorithm that has a adaptation of the weight vector procedure. And this adaptation has shown promising results. And also the overall uh, algorithm has presented a better or similar IGD results, especially if compared uh, with those MOEs on disconnected Pareto fronts. Thanks, and these are our references.